London is in a death spiral. Move in and lock down the city. Destruction is always the cure. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. Let's take back London. How is uh, being so near to, to the launch of, of a game? We've been working on this game for uh, for over five years, so it's been a very, very long road. Um, a lot of uh, work, a lot of technology built, uh, a lot of people investing a lot of their uh, their hearts into this one. So uh, we're very proud of what we got, and we're <laughs> we can smell the finish line from here. So we're really excited. Six months ago, I was nervous, but we've been doing so much play testing. Um, had so many players play the game and get feedback from them. We've had so much press that have been able to play the game. Previews are out, um, and the reaction looks very, very positive everywhere. So, um, so yes, it, you can be nervous, but I think there's so much excitement about the game, and it's so positive that it makes it easier anyways. <laughs> this is the third Watch Dogs game, and Watch Dogs has always been about issues like, you know, um, um, technology and how it interferes with our freedoms and our democracies and our privacy and, and, and how those in power use technology and how it shapes our economy and all these kinds of ideas have always been a part of Watch Dogs. And I think in Watch Dogs Legion, we just wanted to take those themes and you know push them to a new level by really investing in the in the lives of the people in the game world and the population, so that so that you know you can see the impact of them not having a job or them not having a home or them you know be working for the enemy or uh, and they all have their lives and their relationships and their friends and you know their daily schedules and so it becomes much more part of the play experience instead of part of the narrative backdrop. So it was really just taking the themes that were already there and kind of. Um, adding a sort of next-gen layer of, of realization to them to, to make them more realistic and, and believable. How did your, your, your and your team's work change uh, doing a, a game that it was uh, going to be published in two generations of consoles? We've been developing for five years, and for most of development, you know, the, the first few years, you're principally working in a PC environment, and you're building your tech to be scalable. Um, and you're always trying to optimize for different hardware configurations. And then, you know, when the new consoles start to come and you start to see them very early and you have the dev kits, um, it's not, I don't want to say it's not hard. Uh, it, what I mean is you haven't created a situation where it's harder uh, or it's impossible uh, to to sort of uh, release onto those new platforms. Uh, you know, your hot, your very high end PC version is still going to be able to uh, reach those those new hardware platforms. So I think by working in a very scalable way, when when the new hardware arrives, you're able to make those balancing decisions uh, to to cross generations. I'm really excited, and I hope that that players you know um, enjoy the game as much as the play testers and the, and the reviewers have enjoyed it. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, you know, the game is very unique. You know, we don't have a single hero on the box. You can play as anyone. And and I, and I even on our team over years, we've seen people, you know, taking screenshots of their favorite characters and, you know, why they why they love them so much and why they recruited them and, you know, what's unique and interesting about them. And I, I can't wait to see, you know, players sharing their own expressions of, of the game and their heroes and their stories uh, uh, on the Internet. I think it's a great game for that kind of community and, and sharing.